Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Today, we're going to take you to Eastern Oklahoma to Lake Tenkiller. We're going to be doing some wintertime bass fishing with professional angler Fred Rumbanis. But first, we caught up with our fisheries biologist on Tenkiller as they were doing some sampling there for smallmouth bass. Now, they do this every few years to keep tabs on the population there. And electro is typically done in the daytime, but because Tenkiller is so clear, they've actually found that doing their surveying at night is a lot more effective. Specifically for night shocking, you can see we got our, our lights so we can see to actually dip the fish at night. Then we have our generator to run those lights and we'll have our navigation lights and everything else of course. And then our generator for even you know, our regular shocking at day and, and night. This is our standard sampling that we do. We'll do it you know, every three or four years or so, kind of on a regular basis to keep some trend data. And we're just wanting to look at the population structure, so we'll do that by trying to get as many fish as we can in a set interval of time, which will be 10 minutes. Lake Tenkiller is such a clear lake, especially on this lower end, that if we have a visibility reading of greater than 10 feet, then we'll do night electro fishing. That helps us with our, our catch rates. But also, the idea is that the, in the fall, 60 degrees or so, maybe a little bit warmer, these fish will follow the bait fish up into the creek arms and then the warmer water come up shallower to feed and it'll make them more vulnerable to be caught by our electro fishing gear. Out here tonight, basically, it's we don't have any moonlight out here, so it's it's pretty dark. Uh, our biggest method of navigation out here is with our locators of the, our GPS unit on it. We've already got our our stations preset in a locator. We're able to travel from one spot to the next. So we're out here surveying our smallmouth bass, but you can see we also catch our largemouth bass as bycatch. Normally we do our largemouth bass shocking pre-spawn in the spring, April-ish, somewhere like that. But this also gives us a chance to look and see what they look like. We're keeping tabs on these guys, but we're not going to weigh and measure them like we do the smallmouth since we're looking for the smallmouth tonight. Three forty four, five ten, two ninety seven, two ninety five. 202, 
100. Well, I'm now joined by Ken Cunningham, our Assistant Chief of our Fisheries Division. And Ken, really, electrofishing is a technique that our biologists have used all over the state for quite a while, haven't they? Yeah, that's right, Todd. Uh, we use a whole uh, series of sampling gears to sample fish in our reservoirs and streams, uh, nets and electrofishing, and they're all targeted to specific species of fish. Uh, so electrofishing targets largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, sunfish, those types of fish. Um, and we're collecting a whole suite of data uh, when we do those surveys. We're interested in lengths, weights, uh, numbers of fish, and also the ages of fish. And then, of course, uh, we're trying to get an idea of the health of that fishery, uh, similar to you know, assessing the, the health of a person where we collect blood pressure and, and those kinds of things. Um, in the case of Ten Killer, we have a, a 13 to 16, 16 inch slot, and so we're particularly interested in, in uh, if we're getting fish uh, up to a harvestable size and then how long those fish are, how long it takes to move through the slot uh, and, and to a harvestable size. Uh, and what we're seeing on Ten Killer um, is, that, is that that population is very healthy and that we are seeing fish that are moving uh, to a harvestable size and moving through the slot at a relatively rapid pace. Well that's good news. And speaking of fishing at Ten Killer, we're going to be doing some of that with pro angler Fred Rumbanis right after this week's Outdoor News Report. Well, as promised, we're now going to go fishing on Lake Ten Killer with pro angler Fred Rumbanis. Now, Fred has many accolades to his credit since turning pro. He's been to the Bassmaster Classic numerous times. He's won over a million dollars, but probably my favorite thing about Fred is he lives right here in Oklahoma. Well, we caught up with Fred recently and picked up on a few of his wintertime bass fishing techniques. You know, this time of the year, most people aren't on the aren't on the water. One of the reasons I, I've really liked fish in the winter time, um, you're actually targeting some of the biggest fish that you can catch all year long. Um, you know, they they stocked up in the fall. They've eaten all the shad. They're plump. They're getting ready to spawn. So you've got the mix of of full belly plus girth from eggs and uh, you know you can hook into some of these bass and they're just as wide if not wider circumference than they are long and uh, it's just so much fun when you hook into one of these these big fish the water temp is uh right now we're looking at 38 and a half so i mean it's it's under 39 degree water up here where we took off typically in in the winter, you know, you're, you're targeting suspended fish. You know, they kind of get dormant. They kind of just lurk around and, and suspend. And and the way to really target them, um, we're going to go through a few different techniques today. Um, but two of my favorite, um, and and one of them we've actually banned from the uh, the Bassmaster Elite Series tour. But it is the uh, Alabama rig. It's a five um, bait spreader that you put five different swim baits on. And uh, it's just a big group of swim swim baits going through like a ball of bait. And uh, it just kind of sits in that middle of the water column, right where the fish are. And uh, they really can't refuse it when it runs by them. The other bait that I would use in tournaments um, is a jerk bait. When you jerk it, it's gonna stop in that water column and, and it's not gonna rise, it's not gonna fall. Um, and you just wanna leave it there and be patient. And uh, that's, that's really the key to the winter time is, is slow down, slow your retrieve, and be ready because uh, you're gonna catch some fish.
There we go. That's a good fish right there. Awesome. I cut on that Alabama rig. I threw it right to the tires. And uh, sure enough. Uh -oh. Let's see here. Let's not get that one out of you. Let's get that one out of you. That's a good quality fish right there. That's that's what ten color's full of right there, you know, good solid three pound fish. And uh, so I'm saying, if you get five, I mean, you're gonna have a 15 pound bag. Awesome, that was fun. All right, broke the ice. Let's see if we get another one on this. I, I typically like to fish tires and stuff like that when it's sunny in the winter time, just cause they, they can retain heat a little bit and they, um, you know, the fish will suspend up underneath them and they use it as shade and everything else. We came here, it's overcast, cold, and uh, caught the first fish of the day, just suspended up underneath them. But you know, there's a lot of things underneath them tires, the algae and uh, bait fish and everything else, so fish can really utilize it. See, I was thinking more likely we'd get bit on the point than the tires, but it's definitely worth a shot. <laughs> the majority of the fish you're gonna catch this time of the year will be suspended. You're gonna be going down the bank, around points, and you're gonna see fish, you know, 10 feet off the bottom. And uh, <clears throat> it seems like the colder the water, um, they either get pushed right up to the bank, but those ones aren't the ones we're really targeting. The ones that, uh, you know, we're targeting here are gonna be backed off. And, and the colder the water, the deeper they are. So it's easier to find, you know, if you can get in that 40, we're, we're gonna look for like 40, 42 degree water today. I think that's gonna be the key. Um, it, once it gets any colder than that, it's harder to get your baits down deep enough to really trigger those bigger fish. So if we can find that water column in that, you know, when the surface temp's 40, 42, I think they'll be down in that six to eight foot suspended range and that's where we'll catch fish. Large mouth. He ate that one. I would put on a bait that you can go and cover a lot of water because you're not gonna find a whole lot of fish just grouped up in one spot. Um, you might, but you're gonna catch a lot of individual fish. And, and really the best way to do it is, is to throw that five rig spread or the Alabama rig. <laughs> Little guy, I can hardly hold you. My fingers are so frozen. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it's so fun. It is so much fun. a really heavy rig when your fingers don't work so well. It's one thing when it's cold, it's another thing when it's cold and windy. <laughs> but it does keep you warm at the same time because it is, it's a lot of work to throw the Alabama rig. With the wind chill right now, it's definitely freezing because my fingers feel like they could shatter <laughs> if a fish bite, so. Oh man. Um, this is the Alabama rig. Uh, we got some spinnerbait blades. It's overcast today, and uh, when it's overcast, I like to throw a little bit of extra flash on it and put some blades. Um, we have a couple different types of swim baits on it. You can mix and match. It's kind of the beauty of this thing. This is one of those deals you, you start shallow and just work your way back. When you start finding those fish on your graph, try to think about um, keeping that, you know, this whole <laughs> Alabama rig in that strike zone. So sometimes I'll be parallel in the bank. Sometimes I'll be casting towards the bank. And really the fish will kind of tell you what you need to do. So we decided to run down the lake a little bit further even. And uh, we're looking at 42.38 on water temp. <laughs> it's getting warmer. But you know, the big thing is getting out of that nasty weather. I mean, it's blowing 15 miles an hour out there on the main lake where we were fishing a minute ago. And 
It was getting to the point where I thought maybe I'd let go of my rod if I swung hard enough because my fingers hurt so bad. So kind of getting out of the wind a little bit. And again, we started in the back of the creek and we're gonna work our way out. And you just know when you take a major creek like this, the fish are in it. You just gotta find where. And so we'll just kind of slowly work our way out until we come across them. Little guy. There's a little itty bitty guy. That's all right though, I'll take it. <laughs> oh man. We just bumped it right there. As soon as we hit from that little tiny rock to, you know, like chunk rock to a little bit thicker rock, I mean, it's definitely some sort of transition. Hopefully, hopefully we run into some more fish right here. There we go. Yeah, a little bit better. <laughs> Boy, my hands are so numb, I can hardly have the strength to hold a fish. <laughs> Let me get some pliers and assistance on this one. There you go. Yeah. Bye, buddy. Thanks for playing. All right. One of the big things that I like to do this time of the year, um, and especially during competition, is throw a jerk bait. This is a suspending bait, and uh, it's, it, this, this one right here is by Ima Lures. It's called the Flit. And what it does is it allows you to jerk it in the water, but then suspend. It'll stay in that water column and just slowly sinks. And uh, to keep it so it just kind of stays up and really suspends, I do a couple tricks. Um, I use a fluorocarbon leader. And I use a, um, a line that, that floats, it's like a braided line. And once that fluorocarbon kind of gets it down to sink, that, that braid kind of holds it back up. So once it gets down, it actually brings the tip of the bait back up. So when you're waiting, it just gives a little bit motion in that same spot and that can trigger bites. Let's try this on my jerk bait again. Ooh. On jerk bait. Oh. Oh, it's down there. That's awesome. If you can stand to come out here in the cold, and uh, you know, a couple of things that, uh, that I'd like to emphasize, you're gonna be out here fishing for big fish. You know, it's gonna be windy. Most of the places we're gonna try to fish are gonna be where we can go with the wind, so the wind's to our back. Um, the other thing is, you know, if, if the main lake's not really working for you, go into back some, some of these pockets, and uh, I say go all the way to the back of the pocket and work your way to the mouth if possible. Um, somewhere in between, you're gonna run across fish. And once you figure that out, you can kind of pattern it through the lake. You know, the, the big thing I can I, I want to emphasize is, you know, be safe, wear your life jackets, bring a buddy, don't go fish by yourself this time of the year. Um, but be ready to catch some fish. <laughs> it's so much fun. 
Lake Ten Killer. Whew. Awesome. Wintertime fishing. Well, don't overlook just how great wintertime bass fishing can be. And like Fred said, you may just have the lake to yourself. You know, I for one am certainly glad that our fisheries biologists know what they're doing and can help to shape regulations to make lakes like Tinkiller the very best they can be. Hey, thanks for joining us today. And for all of us at your wildlife department, we'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma. Uh -huh.